Please welcome to the stage the Policy Circle's Executive Director, Stacy Blakely. Well, good morning. I am delighted to see you all. This room is full of friends and supporters and volunteers and circle leaders and members, and we are overjoyed to have you here at the Policy Circle's fifth annual Leadership Summit. So welcome to all of you. And for those of you that are joining us virtually, we want to say thank you for taking the time today. Um, I know that it is difficult for all of us to make an investment in ourselves, take time to learn, maybe a little self-care out here is always a good thing. And for those of you at our home, if you're taking time out of work, or your caregiving responsibilities. We just want to know we value your time and we plan to make the most of it here today because this summit is unique. I think many of you in this room, I've seen you at summits around the, 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 the country. And what you're going to find here is not only an exploration of the issues of power and water, really to boost your policy acumen and strategic thinking about those issues, but we're going to dig deep into highly relevant and often practical leadership skills. This is an event for the curious, for the problem solvers, the innovators and the get it done kind of women that we know you all are. If you're joining us virtually, please know that we're gonna be streaming live and then all these sessions are recorded. So for all of you in this room as well, if you wanna share this with your friends, your family, your coworkers, they can register for a free ticket, download the app, and all this content is gonna be available on demand. And it will be on demand for several months. So we're excited to continue to share the remarkable speakers and insights that you're gonna get here today. Now, if you haven't downloaded the app already, it's key. If you're here in person or virtually, it lists out all our speakers. There's already valuable content loaded, and you'll be able to connect with people who are here in person and virtually. So make sure if you haven't downloaded the app, um, I think we're going to have instructions for you on the screen. And if you flip over your name tag here, there's a QR code. So you scan that, and you'll be able to download the app. And at this time, I really want to uh, recognize our sponsors. We wouldn't be able to host such a lovely and beautiful event without the investment of people that believe in our mission. Um, I want to thank Goldman Sachs. I want to thank Catherine Gale. Uh, I want to thank Authentic Agility Games and Kathy Cranberg. Um, I also want to thank uh, Sylvie Legere for all the special touches that you're going to see throughout the day um, have been sort of her gift to us so we can have the best experience possible. You're going to see on the screens also our other sponsors who have done tremendous amount of uh, work to be here. They've provided expertise. They have provided dollars. And I just really want to thank uh, the Mackinac Center, um, the America First Policy Institute, Diane Finnerty. Um, we've also got um, our next screen of sponsors that I want to recognize, the Texas Public Policy Foundation, Engage, Ashley Davis, Ultra, She Said, She Said, and Laura Cox Kaplan. Uh, and then we've also got uh, Jackie Denial. Who else? Do we have another screen here of folks that we want to thank? Uh, that's it. So I just let's give a round of applause to our sponsors. So the last 18 months have shed light on the enormous amount of obligations that women are facing. Uh, business owners, many suddenly found themselves as educators. Um, and as they navigate the new normal, we talked about this a little bit last night, some women are really for the first time asking questions about public policy. They want to understand, what is the role of government? What is my role? How can I have a positive impact in my community and let my voice be heard? There is, without a doubt, an undeniable awakening in this country, especially amongst women who prize freedom, who understand the value of solutions rooted in entrepreneurial values. And I will tell you, as we travel around the country, we continue to meet women who refuse to accept the narrative that they're powerless. I think there's a lot of you in this room. In spite of that, we still meet women who don't want to speak up. They often get into social settings or in their workplace, and they're hesitant. And we ask them, why is that? 
And more often than not, they say, I don't feel educated enough on a particular issue to kind of raise my hand or step up and speak. I think that you probably are all familiar with the Hewlett Packard study that a man will apply for a promotion or a job if he is 60% qualified. Women wait until we're 100% qualified. There is oftentimes among some women this inability to recognize how powerful they are, how effective that they can be. And so the policy circle steps into the gap. We help bridge that confidence gap and we build courage in a variety of ways. First and foremost, we have our policy circle briefs. These are reliable, carefully vetted tools that you can use to get completely up to date on a variety of issues from mental health to the Middle East. And having this information and then utilizing it in our discussion model, that round table model, where you learn to articulate your insights, you understand how to apply the facts in a powerful conversation. What this does is this makes you so much more effective as a civic leader in every setting, in your workplace, in your community. And so we're empowering and equipping women in a variety of ways. You know, the Policy Circle is a 501c3 organization. We're nonpartisan and we're grassroots and we're providing multiple pathways to meet you right where you are in your leadership journey. We are laser focused on local engagement. And while our reach is national, we are in 44 states and excited to have almost 400 circles, we really wanna make sure we're equipping women at that local leader that value personal responsibility, freedom, and innovation as the best means to unleash human potential. Over the next day and a half, we'll share more about the Policy Circle model, the mission, and ways that you can get engaged, and importantly, how you can start to evaluate, how do I make civic life a priority in my already busy life? I think this is a wonderful time to acknowledge our three co-founders who bonded over the desire to equip and inspire women. They all love to ignite potential in others. Angela Brawley, Sylvie Legere and Kathy Hubbard uh, founded the Policy Circle in 2015. And since those early meetings in their living rooms, we have now evolved to this nationwide presence. Angela is here. We are so grateful to have her leadership. She's also going to be sharing with all of you uh, insights about becoming board ready. What is it to serve on a board? Kathy is joining us virtually. And I have to tell you, we are missing Sylvie Legere. Everybody in here is missing her, and she is at home recovering from an injury and a surgery, but nothing's going to keep her from this summit, ladies. So we are going to beam her in, and I can't wait for you to hear what she has to say to you this morning. Sylvie, we sure do miss you, and I can't wait for you to talk to the group this morning. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Oh, my gosh. I can't tell you how disappointed I am to not be, um, not be there. So I'm in a real life detour that I did not expect at all, but I am just so proud, so proud of the Policy Circle team who really has worked tirelessly to make this event an incredible event. And I look forward to, to your feedback. You know, as Stacy said, um, and kudos, Stacy, for your amazing introduction and, and your leadership here. It's wonderful for me to actually let go of the reins and pass them on to Stacy. Um, but you know, as she said, the Posse Circle is for the curious-minded uh, woman. It's for the woman who wants to expand her know-how, uh, her sphere of influence. And every year, we try to stretch ourselves a little bit in selecting a topic for the summit. Last time we were together in Chicago, we talked about data security, the digital divide, cyber security, especially in protecting our critical infrastructure. And we left that summit thinking, well, critical infrastructures are really power and water. So why don't we dig a little deeper in exploring what, what it is and what it means and why it's so important to our lives and how it functions? Because and I guess the summit couldn't, could not be more timely, right? We, every day in the news cycle, there is a headline around water and power. 
Michigan, as there's another community that sadly has contaminated water. We hear about China producing more coal to meet its power needs. The UK having power shortages, a pipeline built between uh, Russia and, and Germany. We have heard from blackouts in, in California. And then even like just recently uh, in Texas in February, we kind of learned firsthand a real example of this interdependence between water and power. So it's important, but I'm sure if you're like me, I, I take it for granted. I take it for granted that the lights are on, the water comes out, and, and sometimes I think we, we forget everything that we can do because of power. Our kids can do their homeworks at night, and the life goes on when the sun goes down. Our, we can plug in our computers, we could still do our work. We don't have to spend hours, you know, fetching for firewood or water to cook our meals. We, uh, but this is not the case everywhere in the world. There's like 769 million people around the world today that do not have access to electricity. There's 2 billion people who do not have the infrastructure to have safe water. And when you realize that, you, you realize, wow, the, we, we do a lot. Power is access to a modern society. And in preparing for this summit, I had a wonderful conversation with Magat Wad, who's actually one of our featured speaker in, on the video, on the, on the app. And she was telling me the horrific story of her friend in Senegal, in Africa, who died for not being able, for her to not be able to take him into a functioning hospital. In Africa, 10% of the population have access to electrical grid. And as I was lying there getting an MRI at a medical facility here, I realized, it dawned on me, like, well, you know what? Without power, there's no x-rays. There's no lab work to identify an infection. There's no advanced surgeries. And then without water, there's no sanitation. And I come to find out that actually there's like two in five healthcare facilities in the world that do not have access to water and soap. And you'll hear from Usha Rao, who is also featured in the, in the app. She says, you know, water is dignity. Water is life. So this is the topic of this summit. We call it the confluence of essentials because the confluence of essentials of water, power, and leadership. Water is life. It's dignity. Power is really human flourishing. And leadership drives the innovation that is required for us to take ownership of solutions in our communities. So, you know, I'm so, so grateful for the amazing speakers that, that we have lined up that are here today in person in Palm Beach, but also that we have featured in the app, because you'll hear from business leaders, from policy regulate, from policymakers, regulators, and innovators. And it, this, there's also two new briefs that the Posse Circle is publishing around water and power. So this is your time to pause, to learn, to go beyond the headlines, to dig into the issues, stretch your mind, develop your system thinking. And, and perhaps following this, you'll feel really confident to maybe raise your hand, to hold a position on a task force or a commission, to participate in a debate on this issue, to hold your elected officials accountable. So we hope we leave you with a really exciting time, with really exciting and um, actions in your way. And you know, I wanna echo Stacy's thanks for our sponsors and volunteers that make this fifth annual Policy Circle Leadership Summit a reality, which is amazing. And also, I want to thank the board, the National Advisory Council, the State Leadership Council, who volunteer their time, their expertise to energize the policy circle around, around the country. And um, finally, you know, I, I want to say I'm so sad to not be here, but, you know, in these circumstances that I'm in, the silver lining is that I am so inspired and um, my spirit is up and lifted and my energy is up because of women like you. Women who want to learn, who want to lead, and who care. And I'm so proud to be part of this Policy Circle community. 
So I apologize to be emotional, but this is, this is so much. And I welcome you to the summit. And I'm so excited for you. And I'll follow everything online. And uh, I'm excited to hear from you. So I will see you. You guys will see you being back on my feet in 2022. I'm just going to throw this out at you, Sylvie, because I was thinking about this backstage. You always want us to say, like, okay, what's your takeaway, right? You always force us to think about. What do you want us to walk out the door and do? So for these women in the room, and I know I'm hitting you with this off, on the, off the cuff, but what would you love for them when they leave this summit? What's the outcome that you hope for as you planned this? Uh, you know, I think first of all is, is connection with each other and, uh, and also connection with each other and, and a focus. This topic of energy and power is huge. It's big. And I think as you think about it, you're like, what is it? What is the little piece in this that, that will become mine, that I will be involved in and I will engage in with anyone in, in my community? And, and perhaps you also love for everyone to have the courage to engage with people with their elected officials on the top so that you could share your views and your priorities. So I think it's, it's connections and, and it's finding a focus. And uh, those would be, I think, the greatest takeaways. Well, I know, well, I know that, that we are all energized. We're grateful for your leadership. I like to tell everybody we picked this topic some time ago. It was actually going to be our topic for the 2020 summit. And Sylvie kept saying, power, water. You can't have power, you know, or, or water without. And kept highlighting this and for those of you from texas in february as we woke up with no power and no water i said sylvie uh get the crystal ball out let's pick some stocks and go to vegas because you picked this topic so we are grateful for your forward-looking leadership sylvie and excited to hear from you later in the day so thank you from joint for joining us from chicago Right. right. Great. Well, at this time, I'd like you to direct your attention to the screens. We have a remarkable video from one of our partners, Kite and Key Media. Following that, we'll get started with our first panel.